So we're in the grass garden at the beginning of February, and this is the time that we do the big maintenance work on the grass garden, which is the big cut down. We want to kind of give nature a bit of a helping hand, so we cut them all back to kind of neaten the grass garden up and to make room for the new growth that's going to come through over the next few weeks and months. We tie the grasses up and we just take a hedge trimmer through the grass about three, four inches off the ground. So we don't have to do this. The, the grasses would be perfectly fine if we didn't cut them back. It's largely an aesthetic thing. What it does replicate is natural processes that shape the grassland biomes. One of the reasons that grasslands are so prevalent around the world is that grasses are really well adapted to a series of natural pressures. So grasses can cope with seasonal drought, presence of grazing animals, and they can cope with wildfires. So those latter two particularly are sort of this process. They would get rid of a lot of the foliage in the wild. So as we go into winter, the grasses go dormant, they start to go brown and crispy, um, but truly deciduous grasses, those that lose their leaves, are actually quite rare. So as you can see behind me, they keep everything. Um, we've got the inflorescences, we've got the foliage still, um, which is lovely for winter structure. So because what we're cutting down is biologically dead material, the plant has gone dormant, it's taken all of its energy back into its crown and the new growth will come from the base in the majority of plants. Some of them are evergreen and keep their leaves throughout the season. Those deciduous grasses, all of the foliage and the flowers are dead, so we can be quite heavy handed about it. The grass family is incredibly diverse. There's almost 12,000 accepted species of grass, which is a huge number. It's one of the biggest plant families. And within that 12,000, there's a huge amount of variety. There are deciduous grasses, there are perennial grasses, there are annual grasses. And we try and represent a lot of that here in the grass garden at Kew. So as well as the big cut down, once we've kind of cleared through the grass garden a bit, it's a great opportunity to do some of the other big jobs that we need to do in the grass garden. So a particular problem with managing a collection of grasses is that lots of species produce what are called rhizomes. And these look a lot like roots, but they're actually stems that grow horizontally under the ground. And at intervals along their length, they can produce new roots and shoots, essentially creating new plants. So what we find is that a lot of the species that we have in the grass garden tend to run, they spread. So what we have to do at this time of year is get them back into the clumps where we want them to be, to stop them running into each other so we can see the distinct plants. We have in the grass garden about 40 annual grasses. So these are grasses that complete their entire life cycle from germination to setting flower to setting seed and then eventually to decline and death all within one growing season. To make sure that we're growing the right plant, we collect seeds from these 40 annual grasses every year. We clean the seeds, we sort them, and then our nursery sows them around this time every year so that we have plants ready in May for us to plant out into the display. One of the ways that you can categorize grasses is to split them into cool season and warm season grasses. This is to do with the way that they photosynthesize, but what it means practically is that some grasses grow better in cooler temperatures and some grasses grow better in warmer temperatures. So the cool season grasses that are native to more temperate regions, they're gonna start growing back really quickly. We'll cut them this week and in the next week or two, we'll start seeing the new growth starting to come through already. If we have a good run, it could take maybe two days, three days to do the entire cut down. We need to start doing some of the more fiddly evergreen grasses where we're kind of taking out individual inflorescences, combing through dead leaves. But the big cut down of the deciduous grasses hopefully will only take two days with a very large amount of help. I have help from across the gardens, up to 25 staff, students, apprentices come and give me a hand to get this done at this time of year.